So the first question is, how do I disinfect or clean my cages? The answer to that is isopropyl alcohol, and that's because it evaporates immediately. But it's really important to note that I do then go over with a damp piece of wet tissue and make sure there's any residue that could still be there, that it's gone. I let the girls potter around in and on top of their cage and just outside in front of me and over me whilst I'm doing the cleaning process. And this is because it just doesn't disturb them too much and they quite like being involved in the process and I find the same thing with my mice. Obviously because I'm using a cleaning solution I make sure that they're not in that space as I'm doing that particular space. So I just move them to a different part of the cage or choose a part of the cage that they're not in at that time. My next question was what cage do I have? I'm actually unsure of the specific manufacturer of this particular cage but I did get it from a store called Bud Troll in Sydney. It was really difficult to find a cage here in Australia that was big enough and had big wide open doors and as the girls get bigger I can also add on a second section on top to make it even bigger. I have to say that I've been super impressed with this cage because it's really well made, really sturdy and it was really easy to put together. The next question was why did I choose female rats over male rats? To be honest it was a really difficult decision. In the end the girl that I wanted to get the rats from had girls so that was the primary reason. But there were a couple of others. One is that my research had shown that girls do tend to smell less. I don't know whether that's true because I haven't owned male rats. Uh, but the second was that I had heard that sometimes males can suffer with hormonal aggression unless they're neutered and I was a little bit worried about that just because I've got a young daughter who was bitten by our male dog last year and unfortunately sadly in the end he had to be put down and it was a really traumatic process and yeah I just wanted to minimize any risk of that happening again and of course it doesn't matter really whether it's male or female animals um, you know if an animal is spooked or something like that or unwell then of course they can bite. Um, but I just wanted to try and minimize that risk if there was going to be any. The pink ball will be replaced by a rock, but at the moment it's all I had. It's just to help them with their litter training and guide them to wee in there. I thought it was pretty funny that I'm using tigers and cats in their enclosure. It actually just happened by chance, but yeah, they're bits of fabric for them to stand on. This tunnel is a cat tunnel. And I don't know whether you just spotted that picture, but my partner did dare me to put it over my head because it was so big and I just thought it was a really funny photo. So this is, I think that's pigs. So yeah, fabric I use as hammocks. So you can save yourself a lot of money on hammocks by just making them yourself. And you don't need to do loads of sewing, just literally fold pieces of fabric up and then just tie them to the enclosure. They make really nice little hammocks that you can switch out throughout the week if they do get any wheel on them or anything like that. I don't have a wheel for my rats yet because I haven't found the one in Australia that I wanted and ordering them internationally was really stacking up on cost. So for now, obviously they come out and they spend all evening out with me every night. I'm really lucky that I can do that with them. So they're getting plenty of exercise in the meantime. The next question was, how would you describe the differences between pet mice and pet rats in terms of affection and also in terms of the work it takes with the cages and taking care of them, do you find there is a big difference or rather a small difference? They all have their personalities, so it definitely varies. I've had some mice who've loved human company and some who prefer to independently explore. And my rats are really happy to be picked up and cuddled and actively do ask for that. I've had a couple of mice who have done that too, but I'd say the biggest difference is that rats are very good with their bladder control and litter training, and so they can stay out with us for quite long periods of time before doing anything like that and are actively using their litter tray. I do want to do that with mice as well, but I haven't managed as of yet to litter train them. Rats definitely are like puppies. I find that when my mice are out, they're just kind of exploring everywhere. My rats are definitely more clingy to me, so if I've got them on the bed, for example, and I get up to move from the bed, they'll instantly run after me and sometimes even jump onto me to stay with me. So I'm really pleased that they've bonded with me in that way. It's really important to add some kind of substrate at the bottom of their cage that they can burrow into because rats also really like to burrow. It's also worth noting that baby toys make excellent rat toys. 